Before we start this video, please like and subscribe. I put a lot of hard work and extensive research into these videos. And if you guys know of any big train derailments that are not very popular, like this one, please comment down below and maybe I'll make a video about it. But now on to this video of the Swanton, Ohio train derailment. Swanton, Ohio. The epiphany of small town USA with a population around 4,000. The town of Swanton features a small park with an old caboose that kids can climb on and have fun. Alongside the park in town is the Norfolk Southern Chicago line. From Toledo, Ohio to Butler, Indiana, it's one of the busiest lines in America and holds the record for the longest, straightest double track main line in all of North America. But on June 6, 2019, that busy track and the town of Swanton is about to witness a horrifying event that they'll certainly never forget. Norfolk Southern Train 25Z, with locomotives 9955, a D9-40CW leading, and locomotive 1075, an SD70ACE right behind. They were hauling an empty intermodal train coming from New Jersey and heading to Chicago. They were traveling around 60 miles per hour and approaching Swanton fast. Meanwhile in Swanton, a girl from Delta, which is another town over, was driving around in her Tahoe when she got to Main Street and got close to the railroad tracks. The crossing gates activated and the gate was coming down, so she sped up, and swerved onto the tracks, getting her Tahoe stuck, and 25Z was approaching fast, so she got out of her car and tried walking away, and then... At 10.30 p.m., the train hit the car. As you saw, we had multiple angles of the wreck. As the car was stuck on the front of the lead locomotive, dragging it 50 feet to a switch, the car got lodged in the switch and sent the two locomotives and 13 other train cars off the tracks, hitting a power line and leaving the whole town without power for the rest of the night, and also hitting a propane tank leaking propane. Luckily, it did not catch on fire. This derailment blocked the NS Chicago line for days. Amtrak of freight trains had a reroute, causing many delays and congestion, hurting the infrastructure badly. The most surprising part is that no one was injured in this accident, but just barely. This is Ed Pointager and his wife Tia Pointager's house. They had just gone to bed at the time It woke up to what sounded like a tornado going through, quote-unquote. The train derailed just feet from their house, creating a V-shape around it. They are very, very lucky. Here's an interview with Ed and Tia, credited to Delay and Block Productions. We had just gone to bed, and we heard a god-awful noise, and it got 
louder and louder and louder and louder, and our whole house was shaking. And uh, we instantly jumped up, and then all of a sudden it just stopped, because it seemed like it was never ending. It seemed like it would never stop. And it stopped, and I came out the back door, I opened up the door, and I looked at Tia. Well, when I opened up the back door, there was a train car right there. And I told Tia, I said, we gotta get the hell out of here. So we grabbed our necessities, ran out the front door, well, our neighbor was already on his way over here to make sure that we were awake. So we went down the road and just started knocking on the doors, telling everybody to get out. And it hit a propane tank there, a thousand gallon propane tank. And it exploded and all you could smell was propane. So we didn't know what the train was carrying or what. So we just scooted out. The only thing I could recollect it would sound like is a tornado. And there was explosions, of course, the transformer went down and then the propane tank, but it, a, a tornado, I would say. And it just, like I said, it progressively got louder and louder and louder and it went through my mind, is this ever gonna stop? It just seemed like it, it had to have stopped sometime because it, either that or we would have been dead. <laughs> uh, after, after seeing all this happen, uh, are you gonna go play the lotto finally? Yes, I will. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> That's one thing that everybody's been saying, Ed needs to play the lotto. One thing, we are very fortunate that these were all empty cars. It, we were, we were thinking about scenarios yesterday, if this would have been rolled steel or cars on here, this whole neighborhood probably would have been wiped out. Tia, what was going through your head at that time? Uh, I don't really know. Just grab your shoes and purse and leave. When you saw all these cars in your backyard when the sun finally came out, what was your reaction? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It, unbelievable. I mean, it was just truly unbelievable so what what when it happened tell me a little bit about the the actual damage to your property your buildings weren't damaged but they, no. they were awful close they were close if you look over here there was a car actually dug in right behind my two vehicles and when it hit it threw stones everywhere up against the house the trailer the cars broke the one window on the car but that's realistically all the damage we got when they came through the next day and started moving these cars around. What was it like when you saw those big movers come through? What exactly did they do? They were literally throwing the cars off the tracks. They were just throwing them off and there was a, like a K5 dozer down here, just moving them down, moving them out of the way. So have you guys heard anything about the, the woman that decided to park her car on the track? Have you guys heard anything about that? I heard she turned herself in. Good, good. Didn't know about that. Yeah. What's uh? Do you guys have any advice uh, for anybody that lives next to a railroad track if something like this <laughs> happens to them? <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Just be prepared to run. Yeah. Speaking of that woman that got her car stuck, it turns out she was drinking prior to the incident, and that's probably why she sped up, got her car stuck, and ran away. But a couple hours later, she turned herself into the police and pled guilty to operating a vehicle while intoxicated and in interference with the operation of a train. Speaking of the train, Norfolk Southern estimated over $1.5 million in damages, and both locomotives 9955 and 1075 were repaired and returned to service, but all 13 derailed intermodal cars and containers were scrapped on site. Well, that's all I have for this video. If you liked it, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And once again, if you know of any big train derailments that are not very popular like this one, please comment down below and maybe I'll make a video about it. And from now on, I will try to upload a video from every week. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.